I'm Aisha Lemming. Uh, for 15 years, I was a Dolly Parton's primary pattern maker and seamstress, and uh, I'm shifting into teaching and doing different things now, but I wanted to tell you a little bit about that world. Um, and so I've also been one of her main seamstresses, one of the people who cut her things and embellish her things and finish her things and fit things on her. Um, and so I've sort of been in this world for a long time. And um, yeah, it's been really fun. And I want to tell you a little bit about it. typically works is that there is a designer somewhere stylist designer costume designer however you want to name yourself and whatever they come up with this idea um, when it comes to me and Steve he and I worked together for a long time and I got to the point I was really pretty good at speaking his language and understanding what he meant so this is a fairly nice sketch that he did uh, for the 2017 I believe Emmy's dress that she wore and so this is what we went off of sometimes it's less nice than this it's a scribble if you will and sometimes it's a little more fleshed out than this but again he would bring something like, like this to me and he would have to figure out all the logistics who else is going to be on stage what else are they going to be wearing what else is dolly going to be doing in order to know that what he was designing was going to work for that space and all that that's not my job my job is he's landed on this and he's going to bring it to me i know her measurements i know her shape and i'm the person who's sort of um if he's the architect i'm the engineer so he's drawing the pretty pictures and i'm the person figuring out all the mechanical bits of how to make it work because he also chooses the fabric as a designer he's the one that wants um you know picks the pretty stuff figures out how he wants it to look and lay and do all those things and i'm the one who has to make it happen as a technical person in fashion oftentimes uh my job would be called a technical designer maybe um but in the other world you know in theater it's a, i'm a draper um and a pattern maker so he would bring me this he would bring me the fabric that he wants the trim he wants for this one he actually wanted tambour beading done along here and he had sent uh me and hillary adcock to learn how to tambour bead he decided he wanted to have some of that done in town and so we needed to go learn how to do it so that we could do it teach other people how to do it and all that it's a time consuming process certainly when you're new but it was very exciting and we did get to do some tambour beading on a few different garments for her and so we have to start at this whole process now as a pattern maker I'm the one who has to figure out how to do like this swoop you know we have to figure out the proportions of this wave pattern how to make all these things fit on her body um, and so that's part of the process so um, I would then drape something this is not her this is my own form here at home so this shows you kind of a basic um, bodice with a V in the front. It's a little messy, sorry, I just threw it on there. <laughs> but, um, and this wouldn't have as much air in it back here. But uh, basically, I would make a pattern on a three-dimensional form that was shaped like Dolly or any other client that I had. So I would pad this out to make sure that it fit the person's body properly. Lengthwise, uh, round, bust size, hip size, all of these things so that I know that I'm in the ballpark when I drape something like this. Um, and I was an art major in college. I loved three-dimensional art. So really I consider myself still a sculptor and that's what I do with fabric now. In order to get to be the silhouette that we ultimately want based on the measurements of the person that's gonna wear it. And so that's how sort of custom and couture and even theatrical uh, things are made for actors a lot of times because you need it to fit their body exactly. Um, and so this is sort of the start of that process. From here, I would make a paper pattern that might look like this one, okay? Now this is a center front of Dolly's Grammy's dress, right? This is the basic pattern for that. Um, and then I draft, draped, then drafted um, onto paper. Here's her side front, okay? It's got a little dart in it. It's got a swoop at the bottom. Then I would take this and cut it out of the fabric. So we'll have at least one layer of outer fabric, at least one layer of like stretch silk charmeuse for her lining. Um, it might have two layers on the outside. And if so, we have to figure out how those work together or how they fight each other and get them to look as good as possible. Um, and then we would set about um, putting them together, sewing them, uh, fitting them, tweaking them on the form, making sure they're sort of as close to her body shape as possible. Also realizing that she likes her clothes overfitted, right? But she also still has to breathe in them and things. And so you still have to figure out how to leave a little bit of ease is what it's called, okay? When somebody has to still breathe in there or sing in there like she does, um, you have to give a little bit of wiggle room. Um, but sometimes now, 
quite a few things that we make are have a little bit of stretch in them so that helps us out with her breathing um and so since she likes it so overfit um from then we would make the whole garment get it as done as we could and then do a fitting on her actual body and then we get to see how it really moves in space and how it where how it fits on her and how it lays because every fabric is different and even if you use the same pattern again and again if you use different fabrics it will come out differently slightly so you have to figure out how to tweak those things on the actual person um, and then from there it would get more embellishment or just finishing touches or whatever it is it needs from that final fitting um, and then we finish it and she's ready to go all right so when steve is uh designing for dolly which he has mentioned in other interviews that he's had um he takes into consideration not only the size of the venue who else is on stage with her but what kind of thing she's going to be doing so if she's playing guitar uh the considerations are you know how much decoration is going to be here where her guitar is and is going to rub on it uh two is i've made multiple guitar straps for her in uh the last few years that match whatever outfit she's wearing to make sure that it's all coordinated it's all the right length and it's all the right things right um and also we have to be careful about like what, what kind of jewelry she's wearing what kind of bracelets because if she's playing guitar she can't have those hitting the strings um as far as other considerations going on with her clothes um again if she has to sing for something then something either has to be a little more stretchy or it has to have a little bit more ease in it so she can get that kind of breath that she needs to actually sing um for whatever event it is so a lot of times um like st john suits are uh business nice but they're knit you know they're stretchy they're kind of an, um, a knit and so they're very nice but they have that little bit of extra give to them so if she's gonna sing it happens to be at a business center which those two don't necessarily coincide but every once in a while they do um, that's a really good choice for her to choose or for him to, to give as an option for her to wear as far as something that is stretchy that she can breathe in but it looks professional and business attire um, and but if I'm making something for her it kind of it's the same thing I have to give a little extra room uh, can't have too many uh, like a really super tight belt on them maybe with no stretch so some of through the years um, some things that have evolved in my process um, let's just say take for example if I'm doing anything if I'm doing anything with a waist that typically um, isn't going to show okay if she's gonna have a, a blouse over it, a jacket over it, a vest over it, whatever it is um, I've switched to where what I use as her waistband is a two-inch elastic um, kind of the stiffer two inch elastic uh, because not only does it kind of help her feel um, secured locked and loaded but she can breathe in it and it stretches because it's elastic right but other people don't see it so therefore it's one of those things that stays hidden but it allows a little more flexibility in what she's able to do so you know I hate the fact that if somebody sees that uh, behind the scenes someday or whatever they're gonna see an elastic waistband that's not even covered okay because that's not a couture level of way of doing things but when you're in show business or when you're in theater which is sort of my background but show business is really where I've landed sometimes it's about practicality and making her as comfortable as possible so that's very important to me is to make her as comfortable as possible in whatever she's doing um, so that she can just get out there and not think about her clothes but know that she can breathe in them know that they're gonna be secure on her know that they're gonna pull in her waist a little extra whenever there's a two-inch waistband um, that's there and so that's one of the things that's uh, progressed I guess in my time with her is finding more and more ways to make her more comfortable and make sure that she's getting what she wants and needs and portraying herself how she wants and needs to um, to the public for whatever event it is um, so that's a simple example of one thing that has changed um, stylistically um, she obviously has had changes and she tends to like what she likes and always has but she also will expand sometimes she's gone through phases where she wants to be um, I don't even know how to describe it but like you know sexy Gigi or something like that where she wants that kind of look and feel and I feel like she's kind of come back to that again now where um, she just wants to look really hot right of course uh, but it's it's gone through different phases where sometimes she's in a soft and, and frilly mode and sometimes she's in a fun and playful mode the great thing about her is that she really does wear all these different hats and one of my favorite things coming from a theater and professional costume background um, is the time she spends at Dollywood when she gets to and when she used to do the parades all the time and we would get to do actual full-on 
on themed costumes for her to wear on these floats. Um, it, it's why it's been a really good pairing with me and that whole team for a long time is because I love making that kind of stuff. I love making, you know, I didn't get to make a lot of butterfly wings, but she wore a lot of butter, butterfly wings on there, but I got to make her suits that look like butterflies or whatever it was. And, you know, so I've loved being able to do that all these years. And um, so her style does evolve, but it also develop, evolves per which character she is showing that day or which part of herself she's showing that day, which job she has, which hat she's wearing, you might say, uh, because it just depends on what's going on and how she wants to feel. And if she's singing gospel or if she's singing on rock and roll. So um, there, her style is really kind of all over the place. And she talks a lot about it in her book. She talks about all of her, her you know, how she wanted to feel and look and how she stuck to that all this time um, to be her most true self. Um, and that's true across the board, even though just like everybody, you know, she's an onion. She has layers. There's lots of variety in the things that she likes. Um, and I'll, sometimes Steve or Robert will throw something out there that's totally new. Sometimes she'll love it. Sometimes she'll be like, ah, maybe next time, you know, and move on and keep going. I, in, part of my process is the fact that, like I said, I was an art major in college. I'm a sculptor. And so now my medium is fabric. So for me, if I'm going to make a pattern for just about anything, most of the time I want to start in fabric on the form in a three dimensional space. Um, I just, uh, I work better that way. Um, and so I would drape something like this. This also is an idea that I sort of saw something a few years ago, was inspired by it. Now this is for me, um, but it's one of those things that I basically draped it on this form. That's sort of my size. I've sort of padded out to be that um, just to get the look that I want and some pleats going on and you can kind of just do it in the air and the way that fabric works you know there's a lot you can do with it um, just by pulling on it draping it cutting it all these things that I love sculpting you know you can do some pleats across there um, and this is sort of you know one of my true loves let's just say is draping but it's always best to then go ahead and put it in paper especially when it comes to dolly because then we can reuse it um, a lot of people use actual dotted pattern paper, which I've started out with that, but the, we reuse her, her pattern sometimes. Um, and so I need to get something a little thicker, but I didn't want to go all the way to like Oak Tag, which is like a manila folder, um, level. And so this one is actually in Oak Tag, which is a manila. So this is something heavy that I needed to, um, figure out size about for her butterfly dress that was on the back of the book that just recently came out behind the seams. Um, and so this is an early prototype of me just kind of playing around with size and shape and, and all of that. And so if I need something stiff, I would use this. Uh, my everyday level is kind of this. Um, and if I want to get real fancy, I'll actually use dotted paper. Um, as far as Dolly goes, when she sees something that we've made, um, sometimes it's her idea. Sometimes she's got something very specific in mind that she wants to wear. So, or a style that she wants to wear, or a feel that she wants to have for a certain event, right? If it's a gospel song, she probably wants to wear white. She might want something that has something that looks kind of like wings on it. Um, so she does have ideas like that. Or she, you know, for like the induction to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, she really wanted to look like a rock star, you know? When she sang the song about Elvis, she wanted to kind of have an Elvis collar and almost an Elvis jumpsuit, but it'd be Dolly and Rocker, you know? And so she has a lot of her, her own ideas about that. But then her, um, she has two different designers primarily. One is Steve Summers here in Nashville and then Robert Behar in LA. And so they also come up with ideas for her to choose from and so they'll do sketches or they'll have things made because um, they she trusts them both they've worked with her for a long time and so they'll bring these things to her these ideas to her and she gets to not only say yay or nay but she can also say well let's do this but let's tweak it and do this kind of skirt on it or this kind of pleated wing or whatever it is to kind of get it more in the mood of what she wants to wear now when you go into a fitting with her um, she is very gracious She's very thankful for everything, uh, very grateful for everything that, that all the hours we put in and all those things. Um, when it comes to something, her liking it or not liking it, she doesn't typically say. She will just say, oh, I think this needs a little more work. Or maybe we could do this with it, which means it's not quite there, but it's, you know, close or whatever. Um, originally, when I first started working with her, it was really, it was just either no comment or you could tell she was really happy. And the no comments, we knew we needed to keep working, right? And, and she never said anything derogatory at all about any of it. But it was like, well, maybe, you know, let, and then later on, it was more like, well, maybe we could do this to get it working better. Or maybe, you know, I wish it would do this. And so then it was like, well, let's tweak that. Let's make it happen. Let's work it out for her. So um, 
that's a little bit about her feedback on that, if that helps. I mean, that's how we kind of knew which direction to go. Um, and Steve would often, has often tried to kind of um, expand her own fashion boundaries, if you will. I mean, she is a girly girl. She loves pink. She loves ruffles. She loves white, actually. Um, and so, but he's tried to sort of push her out of boundaries and get her into whatever's going on at the time, fashion-wise. And so she'll she'll go with it a little bit. And then there's some things that are just kind of a little too far. But, um, you know, it's one of those things you gotta trial and error. And I mean, just she's like everybody else. She puts her pants on one leg at a time. So she gets her opinions and her moods about them too. And um, so, yeah. If you're talking about timeline, and I think this is probably true of most show business, I don't know. Um, but especially with Dolly and, and her, you know, things have, sped up let's say uh, in recent years even more so than they used to be um, it used to be that she we would kind of go with a kind of a slower year and then we'd have a big year so we could build a bunch of things and work on a bunch of things and then we she would wear a bunch of them right she would go on tour she would do all these things well in the last I don't know how many years five six years eight years all of that has sped up with social media with her doing more books more movies more Duncan Hines more all these things that are kind of closer to home and doing less of the big tours she's still doing Dollywood so that's a big thing we know about every year um, she will go anywhere from three to six times in the spring um, and so we always know that's a big thing she normally needs about 20 outfits per go because everything has an alternate so even if she's wearing one look and we think that's what she's gonna wear for an interview, we need another look as a backup. So if the button breaks or the zipper breaks or she doesn't wanna wear that or, or she's gonna match the chair that she's in, we have to change her into something else. So there's always an alternate for things, even casuals or dressy casuals or whatever it is. So um, timeline when it comes to this kind of thing is, it just depends. Um, if we've got the time to build it and, and we want something really nice and custom done, you're going to have to give it some time. But at the same time, there's still all of these sort of different levels that are needed. Casual, semi-casual, dressy casuals, dressy, you know, business, you know, make a wish, Dollywood interviews, um, thing, whatever thing she's doing online. And like I said, like the Doggy Parton stuff, the Duncan Hines stuff. So she always needs sort of specific colors for those things, colors and that sort of thing. But um, if we're doing, if I get to do something custom, which is my favorite thing to do, um, it can take typically at least 40 hours, but it's often way more than that. Um, so if it was something that was 40 out, you know, maybe like I got to the point that I've made her so many blouses um, That it doesn't have a lot of embellishment because what's gonna have the embellishment might be the vest that's worn over it or the jacket That's worn over it. And so, you know, I can do a, a blouse in a day or a day and a half pretty easily um, But I've done a bunch of them, you know, so that's the thing it speeds it up But if you're talking about a whole new custom gown that we've never done before like even something like this one that ended up having all this timbre beading on it I mean, you're talking easily 100 hours, 200 hours, you know. Um, I know for the Grammys dress that we did, um, which is what this pattern is, uh, in 2019, I believe it was, when she got the Music Cares Award and they did that sort of homage to her while she was there. Um, and she had the sort of white with the red um, gown that was um, had the wings and all that. Anyway, um, that one, we only knew about it, I think, eight days before she went. And we hired, I hired anybody I could get my hands on. But so we had about six people, but not people that I work with on the daily, a couple of them were. Um, so me and Hillary, who I've mentioned before, uh, worked, she was freelance. So she was putting in hours, I've, I'm on, I've been on salary. Um, and so she put in, I think 110 hours in eight days, which means I probably put in at least 120 hours because I was there more than her, but you know, she was there in the trenches with me as much. So that kind of gives you an idea of like that one dress probably took at least 200 hours and we weren't even hand beading those things. That is fabric that was purchased that had those beaded motifs on that we would then cut out and hand sew on the whole motif. And so, I mean, these things can take hundreds to thousands of hours if you let them or if you have the hands to do them. So um, we don't have a lot of that kind of time or like that kind of sort of manpower, if you will, hand power <laughs> maybe. Um, and so it always depends on how can we make this work in a quicker, more efficient way and still look like a million bucks, right? Um, in LA, there is a costume shop out there that, that Dolly works with quite a lot and has for many years since she was working with Tony Chase called Sylvia's and they have 
a, a staff of hand beaters. And so they will hand bead anything, but there's a lot of them. They're very practiced at it. They do it all the time. Um, whereas here, we typically, Steve will buy fabric that is already embellished and we will work with that to make it happen. So it kind of gives you an idea of something can take 40 hours or it can take 400 hours. It just depends. Timeline, everything is different all the time. It's always, you know, we need it faster more yesterday. Um, a lot of things, a lot of the casuals in those things are purchased and then altered and embellished from there. Um, so a lot of times <clears throat> when I bring somebody on new and some people are faster than me, that's fine. Uh, but I would say if I'm going to take a garment, and I'm gonna completely alter it to fit her, I'm gonna allow at least four hours. And because we just have to do stuff to make it fit her and then be able to get in and out of it for her. And then we have to embellish it maybe on top of that four hours. So we're gonna rhinestone it, we're gonna add trim, we're gonna do add chains, whatever it is. So it kind of gives you an idea of even the simplest thing, you know, cause we even alter her, her pajamas. So um, that lets you know that even that will take an hour or two to just, you know, alter them and get them a little more comfortable for her. Um, and so everything, Sewing takes time. Anybody who sews knows that. Um, and but some of it's uh, you know more complicated, more some of it's simpler. Sometimes you can do it at home in your pajamas, and sometimes you need to go in and, and do it on a dress form and make a whole thing, which is sort of my my favorite part of it. Um, is starting from here and then into the patterning, and then you know kind of keep going. When I'm working with Dolly um, in her costume shop and, and all those things, a lot of times um, I've had my own shop, so I sort of have motivated it and run it and, and uh, had to motivate myself to do those things. Um, and so um, I, I mean, sewing is part of every day in that world. Um, even if I'm patterning or even if I'm cutting or even all of that is leading to sewing. And there's typically so many projects going on at a time. Um, Steve will say that they do 365 projects a year, uh, which is probably not untrue as far as um, there's a, there is at least one garment in process every day and typically there's multiple garments in process um, and it's always talked about as far as like the fire closest to us so even though we think this project might be uh, the closest one to us well now all of a sudden there's three in front of it that are sooner and so now we have to balance out with keep working on this one and do the three in front of it um, and so yeah sewing is never ending um, I have an industrial machine and then I have um, this Foff Expression 3.5 uh, which is an older machine um, they've got new ones now with touch screens and all the things. Um, and I'm a dinosaur, but you know, um, I started out with an expression 2.0, which is the one I have downstairs. Um, actually someone that I first worked with in town, um, that was already working with Dolly doing alterations when I got to town is Lynn Lesher. And she's the one who introduced me to the Foth. And she was telling me how great it is because of this large, um, space here. Uh, basically it's a quilters machine, I guess, um, that allows for a lot more room here. And I never know what I'm doing with Dolly, right? I could be doing leather, I could be doing sequins, I could be doing chiffon, I could be doing tool, I could be doing anything. And a lot of times this larger space is great for that. Um, and it also has the dual feed technology, which uh, Lynn really liked and I really like. It's helped me a lot throughout the years. And um, so for me, this is just a machine I trust. Um, also, it's got a ton of stitches, which, you know, I hardly ever use, but I have used some of these through the years on like edging uh, necklines of t-shirts for Dolly or different things with some of these decorative ones here. Um, this lightning stitch is amazing on um, this one. It's number 18. You cannot get that out though. You got to mean it, mean it. But for her, a lot of her clothes are so tight. You need that stitch, right? If you've done a base, you kind of know you're in the ballpark, you fit it on her and then you really want it to stay forever and ever and ever. The lightning stitch is your answer. It's what I call it. The lightning stitch because it looks like a lightning. Um, and so it has a lot of great feet. It has the dual feed, like I said, that you can keep engaged or disengage. Um, and so I just love these machines. Also, he's not here right now, uh, but my cat likes to sit on top of them. And I got him and my first Foff at about the same time. And so all of these years, he likes to sit on top. So I actually bought this one in 2020. I decided um, the original one I had bought, I'd, I'd used it full time for about 10 years and all of the inside parts had worn out. So it had started slipping in there. And so I had the parts replaced and it's the one that's downstairs. That's the 2.0. And then I went looking for more of these and I found a couple of them on eBay. Um, and those are actually at uh, Dolly's shop now. And then I bought this one. It was still brand new in box um, from a, a company here in Nashville, uh, up in Goodlettsville. And um, just, I just love these machines. And again, since I already have the closed top and my cat is used to sitting on them, I can't not have that feature in my future sewing machines as long as he's around. Cause he's now 14 
and he still will come and sit anytime I'm here. He will come and sit on these machines with me and, and, and we'll sew together. So here I'm sewing a little bit of a curve. Um, as you might know or, or expect for all these years, I've sewn a lot of curves uh, on Dolly Parton. And I joke that I can't even sew a straight line if you paid me to, because for years and years I have not. And I'm a person who pins things together partly because everything on her is so curvy. I have never figured a way to not pin. So in case you're ever feeling weird about that, or like, oh, I use too many pins. I don't care. Use all the pins you want. Make it look as pretty as you can. Um, and for, Cause that's how I do it. But again, it might be because I've only sewn curved lines all of these years. Um, but uh, so going now from uh, this kind of thing all day, every day. Uh, I'm teaching at Lipscomb University um, that started last semester um, when I was the artist in residence there during the exhibit, um, the behind the uh, scenes, the makers behind the scenes um, exhibit at, for the book that was coming out. It sort of all coincided at the same time. Um, and so it was great for me to get to talk to people about my time with Dolly uh, when I was full time at least and um, all the things I've made for her through the years and the process of that. But I'm also getting to share that with the students as far as what it takes to kind of uh, be in this world, uh, which is a lot of dedication. Um, I have a lot of passion for it, um, a lot of fun with it and all of those things too, but it is a very demanding job um, in general for show business period. If you are maybe doing your own thing or maybe whatever, maybe it's not quite as demanding, um, but if you are gonna work in show business or theater or any of those types of things, uh, even for musicians, um, it is very demanding, but if it's worth it to you and you're loving it and you're having a ball, you know, do it as long as you can. Um, so I think that's a lot of it is sort of, for me, I was just following what I was passionate about and what I loved and what I wanted to learn and what I wanted to make and all these things. And I landed in this place where it was kind of this perfect storm of all of these amazing things because I got to do again, clothes that were for business dolly, clothes that were for casual dolly, clothes that were for costume dolly on a float somewhere. Um, and my background of the things I love to make, you know, I got to do all those things, not to mention the gorgeous gowns, which I love to make. So um, for me, uh, it was a really good fit uh, for a long time. Like I said, I'm, I'm sort of slowing down a little bit. Um, I need a little less of that pressure. But at the same time, I think if, um, if you're interested in going in this direction, um, it's really about following your passions and learning as much as you can because the more you know, the more you can share. And there is so much to know in this world. There's still so much in this world that I want to know, you know, and I'm kind of at this point for me that I'm ready to learn and grow more in ways that I don't know. You know, I want to own a 3D printer. I want to know all of these things um, that I don't know. I need laser cutters. I need, you know, I have all these ideas of things that I want to do um, and sculptural pieces I want to make that, but that are still wearable art. Um, and so those are things that I really want to expand my own knowledge on while also sharing this vast amount of knowledge that I do have uh, with the students at Lipscomb or anywhere really. Um, right now I am, so last semester I taught one class, this semester I'm teaching three, but I was also in conjunction with a lot of the students for the exhibit last semester um, and gave a few different talks and a few different workshops um, on rhinestoning and, and different things, just talking about this job in this world. Um, and so that's really exciting to get to share that with them and to see their excitement. Um, and since draping is one of my big loves, pattern making, um, um, I'm actually teaching that this semester and so for me again it's really exciting to get in there with them and teach them how fabric can flow and change and you can manipulate it to sculpt it into what you have in your head and what you want it to be um, and so for me that's really exciting um, and I'm, actually, I'm spending less time at the sewing machine which is it's good for me for the moment take a little step back but I'm also teaching some sewing lessons on the side so I'm totally open to sharing the knowledge I'm just not gonna be the person sitting behind the sewing machine full-time at the moment but I will get back to it I have started making some things for myself and making more sculptural things on my machine um, with nylon like inflatables and, and all these things that I want to kind of play with and branch out um, to make more sculptural things. Thank you.